presented by Phoenix Rising. Weapons mounting the Aurora. Is it viable as a clip-on sight? Today we will examine weapons mounting the Aurora and test the Aurora with a prism scope and several hollow and dot sights so you can determine if this might be an option for you. Hey, Phoenix Rising here, and today we're going to be talking about weapons mounting the Psionics Aurora. If you're looking at doing this, if you're thinking about buying the original Aurora or the Explorer's Edition, please watch this video because I have some information that you're really going to want to see before you go down this path. Okay, Psionics Aurora weapons mount. Okay, uh, let's talk about this. First, I know I have the Aurora Sport. I do not have the regular Aurora. So that being said, there's nothing on Psionics' website about the Aurora Sport being rated for any kind of a recall on any weapons platform. So don't mistake this video as something saying, hey, go ahead and do this. I'm condoning it. Uh, because I'm not, okay? That's a do-at-your-own-risk thing. That being said, the original Aurora states on the website that it was tested to 223 or 556 caliber recoil up to 4,000 rounds. That's all that's all they say it was tested, which is kind of odd to me. Rather than saying it's rated for X recoil, they're saying they tested it. They're not giving it a rating per se. <laughs> kind of a little makes you question that a little bit, right? <clears throat> that being said, they have a Picatinny mount that you can get for the Aurora that attaches on the bottom, and the Aurora Sport and the Aurora both have the same bottom plate and mounting structure, okay? Uh, so looking at that, you can buy the plate, you can buy the Explorer's Edition, which will give you spare batteries, a charger, uh, Picatinny adapter for this, and a 940 nanometer IR illuminator. Uh, and that's basically, they show that, and what they'll show you along with that is they'll show you the Aurora mounted in front of a uh, ACOG on a AR-15 or mounted in front of your daytime optic. Okay, that's the, that's the picture, that's the vision they're giving you, that's the dream they're selling you. Now, I don't own the regular Aurora and I, don't, I haven't purchased their mounting system for this. But what I'm going to say is that I don't believe in its current state that that is a workable solution or an optimal solution for using the Aurora as a clip-on in front of a device. And here's why. If you look at the bottom of this thing, right, you have a quarter inch 20 pitch uh, bolt hole and you have an alignment pin right here. Okay, that mount. The mounting bolt and the alignment pin are about a half an inch apart. What that means is an extremely short radius that makes it nearly impossible to mount the Aurora with any kind of accuracy as far as side-to-side -side play. Right here, okay. That mount is designed for this. This is a tripod mounting system for, you know, clip-in tripod mount for, for taking pictures, for shooting video, okay. This has been around for a long time and it's going to be around for a long time and it's a good system but this isn't designed to be minute of angle locked down repeatedly when you mount a device to it it's just meant to hold something stable okay that being said that's all you currently have on the bottom of this Aurora now uh, my guess would be I've looked at the pictures of the mount has a quarter inch 20 bolt going through it to thread into the hole and it has an alignment pin but it's on a flat metal surface okay it's not doesn't look to have any texture there's no special recesses or anything to guarantee perfect alignment with the Aurora and your Picatinny mount okay so that being said with this just being a plastic recess here uh, which is the same as on most cameras and whatnot right uh, even if they had a very tight fit, custom fit bolt going through to where there was virtually, with a good boss, virtually no wiggle, you're still going to have some angular deflection, okay, in my opinion. Uh, if they did the best you could possibly do, you might have a little less than a degree of variable that I could see. And a lot of that is just due to this mounting pin as your second alignment point. 
and any sloppiness in the bolt and the fact that this is plastic not metal. If you have just one degree of flexibility and motion side to side as you're blocking this down repeatedly, what that amount to one degree is 60 minutes of angle. That's 60 inches, okay, five feet at 100 yards that just that one degree could cause you to vary on your sight end point if you put this in front of an optic, okay. Uh, if they had to mount similar to an ACOG with a with a Y with a long V rail underneath where you you lock it down in place, uh, or maybe some separate three or four separate uh, metal based lockdown points to where the it was a perfect made up between your Picatinny mount and this, I could see it. Okay, I could see this being very wonderful uh, with some other limitations you'll see when we go to the outside portion of this, but I could see it being viable, but not the way it is. Okay. I spent five minutes talking about why I don't like the mounting system that Aurora is trying to sell you. Okay, now I'm going to tell you there's two other options if you have the Picatinny adapter or come up with a methodology of your own, which is possible. Uh, but both of those involve mounting this behind another optic device. Uh, first off, and we'll demonstrate this later too, you could mount the Aurora behind a, a, some sort of a prism sight to give you a magnified optical view. Uh, and, and, and a night vision capability. And it's going to be workable. Uh, you'll see that. But again, you have, because you have a, a really eye relief on this, eye relief on the, the Aurora, you're going to have to shift your sight up forward, mount the Aurora behind it. And once you do that, the only way to get it back to the daytime usability without the Aurora is to relocate it. And of course, every time you do that, you're going to need to sight in. But you can get a pretty good sight picture doing that, okay? And you're going to see that, but I don't consider that to be very practical either just because all this shuffle, shuffle stuff. Uh, the last option is to take the Aurora and mount it again behind an optic, but behind a dot sight, okay? And when you look at this, this is the most viable option at this time using the Picatinny adapter that Psionics is willing to sell you. Uh, just because, again, I don't trust the alignment on it. Somebody prove me wrong. Uh, do a video on it. I'd love to see it because I'd like to believe it, but I, I can't. I can't, just can't see it right now. Uh, and you could do this. You could mount your Aurora behind the dot sight, and because you have no relief on your dot sight, providing you move it up just far enough to facilitate mounting the Aurora, you have a day-night combination that's workable. Now, when I went to do this video initially, I ran into a whole nother rabbit hole in doing this that caused me to reevaluate and again make the video bigger, longer, more convoluted than I originally intended it. So here's what I found out. This Aurora is not necessarily compatible with all of your dot sights, even if they say they're night vision compatible. When I first started out, I had this Hollow Sun, this, uh, see my old eyes here, HE403 Bravo green dot sight, which I really like as a dot sight, okay? It's light, it's compact, I like the motion on function. I mean, this thing has a lot to like about it, okay? And uh, and this was something that I had mounted on a 9mm carbine. It'll probably go back on there, but I'm going to start looking for other options, and here's why. When I put this behind the, or the Aurora behind this, the coatings on the glass on this, even though it was night vision rated with a night vision dimmable dot, it cut like 40%, 50% of the brightness that I could observe of my night vision capability the Aurora had. I mean, it was atrocious. I was appalled and dismayed. How can you sell this as a night vision capable dot sight hollow sun and have it block IR light coming through the glass for an optics or a night vision device to work, okay? So that's what I ran into. Then, uh, because of that, it's like, okay, well, let's get some other dot sites. Let's see if there's if this is even doable at all, right? And I don't have a wide selection, okay, but I had four different dot sites. I had the Hollow Sun, I had cheap little Barska, which this is a crap dot site, okay, uh, mount it on your BB gun or give it to your kid for their airsoft rifle, uh, something like that maybe. But I don't recommend these, but I thought, well, let's try it. Let's see how this works. I also had a Sightmark Wolverine. I believe this is the FSR Wolverine. There's two different versions, but the Sightmark Wolverine, and this is a night vision capable, supposedly, uh, dot sight. 
And then lastly, I have the venerable EOTech 512, which is not rated as to be a night vision dot sight because it's missing a little night vision button up here, just a knob of plastic here. But you can actually punch it down in brightness enough to make it very compatible with night vision, including up to Gen 3. So don't, if you have a 512 and say, man, I, I can't use it with night vision, yes, you can. It's just you've got to manually bump it down. And when you're done, remember to manually bump it up so you can tell that you turned the thing off or else just take the batteries out of it. Uh, but it can be used with night vision. So <coughs> I decided we're going to try four different pieces of gear with the Psionics to see, hey, is it going to work? Uh, that being said, I'll tell you the 512 works, the Wolverine works. Both of you are going to get some light reduction, but they're doable. The Hollow Sun, no. I, I, again, it just blows me away that that doesn't work. And the Barsker really doesn't have any, uh, doesn't block much usable light either. And because of all that, I thought, well, you know what? Realistically, as an added bonus here, I've got a piece of Gen 3 gear. I've got a PVS-14. Let's go ahead, and because this, this is an actual rail mount to go on a rifle. Not that I would probably do that with this, but I thought, well, let me go ahead and look through the PVS-14 with a camera behind it and check all four of these uh, all four of these dot sites with that to see if they, if, hey, are they going to work since they don't work with the psionics? Who knows? So we tested that side by side as well, and uh, that's what you're going to get to see. And to be honest, the Hollow Sun not even very, not even friendly to the Gen 3 in addition to the psionics. So it's a day site, it's not a day night site. That's my take on it. That's our added bonus, uh, <laughs> bonus round for all this. So, so let's go ahead and go outside and see what we can see. Okay, so here we are in the backyard with our psionics and with a PVS-14. Uh, right now we have nothing in front of either of them. Now the conditions out tonight are, it's overcast, there's no moon, no starlight. We're in my backyard, so I have a parking lot light several hundred yards away. And uh, about, about three or four hundred yards actually, and it's lighting up the upper tree. So as we go ahead and shine it up here, you can see uh, both devices are catching a lot of light. And I'll pan it around just to show at a distance. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's picking up details in the trees with the naked eye. I can see the real big branches and the trunks, and that's about it. So let's just go ahead and, like I said, I got the illuminator going, so we'll go ahead and pan across the yard here just real quick. And I'm trying to make sure I'm going to get this in focus a little better. There we go. So there's the Psionics and the Gen 3 both with a 940 Illuminator. Now I'm going to turn the Illuminator off and you're going to see both of these uh, will be struggling a little bit to make a good picture. Okay, so Illuminator's now off and you can see the uh, you can see, see a lot more noise in both images as they gain up. Of course it's more pronounced in the Psionics which is to be expected. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to go and just take these four uh, these four dot sites and I'm just going to put I'm just going to place them and hold them in front of both of these devices so you can see realistically first off with just in, a, in very poor conditions how they affect okay so first we've got our little Barska and here it is and going in front of the Gen 3 night vision as you can see very little impact on your image quality okay let's do the same thing on the psionics you can see I'm getting a color shift and maybe just a very slight impact, but not much, okay? And if you see any red reflections, ignore that, because that's the recording light for the, uh, for the psionics reflecting back from the back glass. I'm going to try and put my finger over that as we go through this, okay? So, okay, now next up we have the hollow sun. Now, and I'm not sure what this flashing deal is here, but, uh, but as you can see, huge gain up on the Gen 3 night vision. Pretty significant when I place the psionics in front of it. So if I hold it way out in front, again it's kind of looking around it, but you can see it's a blocking a good bit of light in standard night vision. Now let's do the same thing for, for our psionics. Our recording light is... I'm going to take this thing apart and dewire that. 
Okay, so now here's our hollow sun in front of the psionics. Holy crap, right? Uh, that's not usable. Uh, even though it's rated for night vision, condemned down to night vision, I don't recommend a hollow sun with the psionics, okay? That, that was the first attempt when I originally came out here was using this hollow sun because I had it handy and I was really shocked and dismayed. So, <clears throat> so much for the hollow sun, right? Much as I like it, it's a daytime only optic. No night vision compatibility like it's supposed to have. Okay, now, now we're going to put the Sightmark Wolverine in front. And if I go out here, you can see, yes, I am losing. You know what? I think I, I think that's a, my focusing uh, light is what's causing that flash. My focusing light on the camera. So as you can see, yeah, I am losing some brightness with... Again, if I can get this lined up good, there's a good lineup. I am losing some brightness, but not as overall, uh, all things considered, usable on the Sightmark Wolverine. Not super great, but usable. And here's the same thing for the Sightmark Wolverine with the Psionics. Now, yes, I am, I am losing some, but it's somewhat usable, okay? And lastly, we have our Eotech 512. And let's go here and put that in front. Again, if I can get this thing lined up, it'd be great. There we go. And there's the EOTech. And again, a little bit of light loss, but overall a very, very good sight picture. Probably the best out of all of them, which you would expect because of the price point of the EOTech. Let me get rid of my recording light. And again, uh, EOTech, not too much difference in brightness. So. I would give the EOTech and the Sightmark Wolverine a pass for use with this. And the Barska, even though I wouldn't never use it in that little Barska anyway. But again, hollow sun, coatings on it block too much IR, and that's kind of a shame because it's rated for night vision. So let's go ahead, we'll do one more thing with this. We'll turn on our IR illuminator and run back room again, <clears throat> just very quickly, just because uh, that's under the poor, poorer lighting condition. So let's see when we have a, if we have an optimal lighting situation or uh or a very bright night okay now so there's the barska in front of the night vision barska in front of our psionics man again no no issue there go back to our hollow sun and again uh look at that goodness that hollow sun is really blocking the light on both of these I mean, I mean, it will brighten up and gain up, but that's a huge, huge impact making the hollow sun again unusable, even using external illumination. Okay, Sightmark Wolverine. There's the Wolverine FSR. FSR uh, Wolverine looks good on night vision. And yeah, we're taking a bit of a hit on our psionics, but really not too bad. It's pretty overall usable. And lastly, We'll look at the EOTech one last time. And there you go, there's the EOTech. And there's the EOTech on the uh, Psionics. So uh, there you have it. There's our, there's our uh, roundup of dot sights with the Psionics and with standard night vision, just because if it affects one, it's affecting the other because they do have similar ranges of uh, frequencies of light they observe. So let's go ahead, we'll shut this down. And we'll do a, a real quick run here, maybe, with the uh, psionics behind uh, prism sight, uh, prism scope, and then in front of it, just to see what you're going to look at or what you're going to see there. So let's go ahead and do that, and uh, I think that'll be a, a wrap on this. Okay, so here we are, and we have the psionics <coughs> mounted behind our 3x prism sight. Now, uh, you can't really see the picture very well right now, so what I'll do is I'll turn on the illuminator and see if we can get that focused. And we'll turn that back off. You can see this thing's not the, this little monstrum prism sight is not rated for night vision use so it doesn't dim down nearly enough and because it's an etched reticle 
on glass there's enough errant light whenever you illuminate it that it just totally blanks out everything so there's our vision behind it and this is kind of sad looking right now but let's go ahead and turn on our 940 illuminator because uh and and the reason it's kind of sad is because you're magnifying anytime you magnify you're going to have a decrease in brightness so it's really struggling for the aurora so now let's uh we just turned on our ir illuminator i'm trying to get every, i'm trying to get everything in focus here so now we have the aurora mounted behind oh, neighbors are pulling in so now we have the aurora uh, mounted behind with an IR illuminator. I'm going to cycle through. There's low, medium, and high. So you can see, uh, you can see very good with. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So there it is with the IR 940 on low, and you can see that's not a very, still not enough light for the Aurora to function very well behind this 3x scope. But as soon as we go to medium, that's actually a pretty darn good sight picture, and that's a 3x magnification. And again, you could use this combination and it would work okay but the catch of it is is you're going to have to sight it in like this and whenever you want to take your aurora off remount your optics you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to do uh do the adjustments on it but but if you needed this on a one one time kind of a rigor an occasional setup it would work just inconvenient cumbersome not the way you would want this to function so okay there you go there's the aurora behind our 3x prism site and one thing i want to mention is just like how we had some dot sites the coatings on the lens is totally killing the aurora's functionality you may run into the same thing putting it behind a given optic uh regardless of brand or anything else i think it's just you know it, it's a crapshoot you it's a it's a trial and error thing so keep that in mind so let's go ahead mount the aurora in front of the prism site just to see if we had a good mount how functional that rig would be and then I think uh, I think we're done so okay so here we are in the backyard we now have the Aurora mounted in front of our 3x prism site and we have our 940 illuminator on because again it's a dark night there's no extra illumination going on and uh, and so this is the way we would need to function uh, to get a usable image in the first place out of the Aurora, really. At least on this night. So let's go ahead, we'll pan around a little bit. And as you can see, there's a certain amount of graininess with the Aurora. And I'm going to zoom in on the back of the, uh, looking through the optics a little better. And, you know, I'm trying to get a better focus going. And that's a little bit of a daunting task here, okay? Because I have basically, I have okay. Now that now, if you'll notice, the image is pretty pixelated looking. So that means we are actually seeing a good clean focus on the Aurora's back screen. And now let's see if we can. Okay, so that's about as good as it gets. Okay. So that gives you an idea of your resolution limitations on the Aurora using it with uh, another piece of night vision. Okay. Let me see if I can crank up this illuminator. I think that's on high. So what I'm seeing here is that, yes, it's usable if you had a good enough mount to do this in front. But the problem I have is that you're you're getting a very pixelated image because you're not even using all of the aurora's available 720p resolution and you also don't have any of the collateral information you don't have your battery status whether you're recording all of that you're not able to see with this the way i've got it mounted now i have the the aurora mounted about a half an inch in front of the uh in front of this 3x prism site so Again, that's why we're zoomed in, we're pixelated, but that's about the best rig you can get right now, unless you have a mile long rail, and then I still don't think you're gonna get all your Aurora's information in to where you're looking at it like you were looking at the back of the unit in handheld use. So 
Uh, there you have it. That's everything having to do with the Aurora. Now, you know, like I said, if Sightmark, or Sightmark, listen to me, Psyonix, if they were to build a mount with some extra recesses, change the design on the Aurora, they could have a stable enough mount to successfully mount it in front of uh, in front of a daytime optic, okay? And make it usable as a clip-on night vision. That, that would be within the realm of possibilities. But what I think they would also need to do realistically is, you know, when you take, when you, when you go to change batteries or SD cards, you pull your whole view screen and stuff out of the back of this Aurora. I could see them having a plug-in module or developing one that would be for use as a clip-on with a specific mount, again, designed to, uh, to have that sub-MOA linearity with your mount. And I could see this being a very viable clip-on system. But uh, again, in its current configuration, the best you could really hope for would be to put it behind a dot site uh, and, make, and, and a dot site that happens to be compatible and you're going to have a little bit of light loss, no magnification, but that's the limitations of the Aurora today. So uh, there you have it, Sightmark Aurora being used in conjunction with other night vision or other optics uh, to try and use it as a weapons sight. I hope you enjoyed this video on the weapons mounting potential of the Psionix Aurora. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, and while it was free to download for personal or educational use, please link and give credit. Commercial use of this video is expressly forbidden without my written consent, and thanks for watching. Copyright Phoenix Rising 2019